Hey everybody, today I'm going to be installing the Creality touchscreen for my Ender 3 V2, which also includes upgrading the motherboard to a version 4.2.7 when it's currently a 4.2.2. Nice, comes with a new fan, that is great. A new cable for the monitor. And the motherboard itself. It has heat sinks installed on the stepper drivers and on the main processor. touch screen. Alright, let's get to prepping the printer and getting all this installed. Alright, so before we start taking anything apart, let's go ahead and make sure the printer's turned off and unplug the power cord from the back of the printer. And let's go ahead and also loosen these screws here so that they're ready to put new cables in. You want this small section to be lowered right there. And it might be a little bit stiff at first when you first start loosening these, but just try not to push too hard, but make sure to get them loose so you can get your wires right in there. Let's start by removing the screen. So first we're gonna wanna readjust our printer to make it a little bit easier if you want. We're gonna go ahead and remove these three mounting screws first. I like to use something to lift the printer up a little bit to make this easier. I have some extra foam laying around. You can use some tape or something else that can give you a good few inches of working room. Now go ahead and grab your trusty Allen wrenches that came with your printer and start loosening these screws up and remove the screen. And we can also unplug the screen first. Go ahead and set that over to the side for now. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the printer on its sides. So I'm gonna remove the little foam blocks I use and use them on the other side. So what I like to do is to put it down Make sure you're careful and don't crush any cables or connectors or anything. I like to put it down like this so that it's got a nice little support and it's not putting any pressure on this here. Don't want to bend the x screen through by accident. Go ahead and remove the top mounting screw right here that holds the motherboard cover on. And then turn it so it's easy to work with. Now we can go ahead and remove the three bottom screws holding the cover for the motherboard. It's always good to start with the first loose in with the short side and then once they're slightly loose you can go ahead and use the other side to go quicker. Keep in mind that the two front screws near the front of the printer are smaller and the back one is larger. Set those aside somewhere safe. Now that we have the three bottom screws removed let's go ahead and remove this and be careful the fans attached here. We're gonna unplug that I went ahead and flipped the printer over on its other side so it's a little easier to work with. So one thing you'll notice if you look really close is some boards might have hot glue holding the connectors in place just so they don't jiggle loose both during shipment and during general use that people have them. So we're gonna have to take that hot glue off and you can put it back on after if you want. I prefer to leave it uh, as is as I don't handle my printer heavily so I'm not too worried about the connectors coming loose. So go ahead and remove the fan that is this one right here and it's actually not glued on now let's go ahead and remove the mounting screws that hold the motherboard on the printer it'll be a lot easier to work with this thing out of the printer with all the cables make sure to be careful not to damage anything while you're doing this All right, so first let's go ahead and remove a few cables just to make it easier to get this out and remove the rest of the cables and plug them in the right place. Let's move, remove the screen, the Z stepper motor, 
cable and the Z end stop cable. If there's hot glue, just make sure to be nice and careful and jimmy it very slowly to get it out. You know. Z and stop. It's got a little Z label on it. And if the hot glue is on there a little bit too much, you might have to heat it up using a heat gun or a hot uh, air blower, uh, a hair dryer or something like that. Looks like it's just loose enough that I can get it off. Okay, so get those out of the way. Out of the way. Now we can move it from here and do some easier transferring to the other board without losing which cable goes where. Okay, so now we'll remove the other end stops. Um, this is actually not the end stop, these are for temperature readings. This is my BL touch. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fan cable. It's the blue and yellow right here. So I gotta heat it up a little bit with my hot air gun. A blow dryer will work as well, but definitely be a little bit more spare so that it's not so specific on where it's heating. And I use about uh, 190 degrees Celsius on my hot air gun. white on the right and black is next okay then go ahead and remove the other stepper motor cables Okay, now for the slightly scarier part. Only scary because I uh, don't want to mix up which ca which cables go where. So just make sure you remember you have the two red on the right side, and then black, red, black, red, thick, and then small. So just get those exactly right when you plug them back into the other board. And a good way to do that is to just go straight to the other board, so you can just. Uh, Unscrew these two, using those screws right in there. Take those out. I'm just gonna let the other board hang down here. So this is the new 4.2.7 board. Plug these in, and screw them on. And then they don't need to be completely tight. We can fix that later, but just for now, we just want to make sure we're getting the right cable in the right spot. You could just completely destroy your board and possibly other stuff. Moving on to the next two. And we can do these last four at the same time since they're not too similar looking. So black, red, black, red. And then let's remove the power supply cables. So we got red on top and black on bottom here. Now let's make sure we get these all in in the right order. So we had black, red, black, red for the bottom ones. Might need to loosen these up a bit more just to make it easy to get them in. And I'm not worrying about them being fully in there right now. I'm just getting them in the right place. And then once they're in the right place, a little adjustments. Now for the two small ones, the black, red, black, red is the order on these. Those nice and in there. I don't want too much of the rubber sticking in or else it could keep the contacts from being good on the metal. And now let's adjust the rest of them and just make sure they're nice and in there well. We'll loosen them a little bit, push them in, and retighten. Now we're just plugging these back into where we unplugged them. Start from the 
inside as that's generally harder to reach. Okay, and now if you have a BL touch, go ahead and plug it in. If not, you don't need to do this step. And now for the stepper motors. So make sure you match the letter with where it, what it has on the board. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the board back where it belongs and we'll connect the screen and the fan once this is mounted back in place. And make sure you get the micro USB and the micro SD card aligned with the slots or else you will damage them when you're mounting the board. and give them a nice final tightening. Okay, now let's go ahead and get the screen cable in place. Plug that in. And then go ahead and run the cable back through its little track here and to where the screen will be mounted. Make sure it's got a little bit of slack, but it's a good little bit tight, so it reaches the screen. Okay. And now we can go ahead and add the cover back on. Make sure you plug in the fan. Now that we've got all the cables in place and we plugged our fan into the board. We can go ahead and put the cover back on and get our small, two small and one long screw to mount this back on here. Make sure that these cables are in the right position so that you don't crush them at all. Okay, and give it a final tightening with the short end. And now for the last screw that is on the top side. Go ahead and lift your printer back to flat. Making sure your cables are all in a good position. Okay, now let's put that last screw okay, in a nice little snug tightness. Now we can go ahead and get the screen mounted. Make sure to use the screws that come with the screen because they are shorter than the ones on the stock screen. You want them on there nice and loosely so that you can tighten them when it's mounted. And try and get them parallel to the extrusion. And then we can put it back on. Make sure it's in a comfortable place for you. And go ahead and screw those back in. And now plug in the screen. And that just about does it. Let's go ahead and power it up and see what it looks like. Okay, now we can go ahead and plug our machine back in and turn it on. And there we go. If you have a BL Touch and you haven't set up the Z offset, go ahead and check out my other video. That'll be linked at the end of this one uh, for how to calibrate your Z offset with the Ender Series touchscreen. Alright, thank you everybody for watching. Have a good day. Like and subscribe if you like this video. Peace.